Sometimes the road not taken is the right choice, and sometimes choosing the moon is what makes all the difference. While at Canterbury, I was early on regarded as a jock. Played three sports, you get the picture. But I also chose to write for the Tabard and became its co-editor. It was a major unconventional choice as it went against the grain. A jock hanging out with hippies. That's what, that's what those two groups were called. Um, my jock friends thought I was a traitor and my hippie friends didn't really trust me. But in fact, I loved writing a great editorial as much as I loved scoring a touchdown. When it came to apply to Williams, I went against the counselor's strong advice and only applied to one school. It was my choice. The Williams admissions officer was incredulous. He asked me how I could make this choice. I said simply, this is the only school I want to go to. When I was a senior at Williams in 1975, I took my girlfriend's interview, her job interview, with a bank called Chemical Bank. She couldn't make it. She told me I had to take the interview and um, she wanted me to get a job. The interviewer asked me if I wanted the job and I simply told the truth. I said, no, I, I definitely don't want this job. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just trying to keep my romance alive here. <laughs> you know, give me a break. Uh, she is now my wife. She's actually sitting in the front row. Um, well, they hired me. I, don't, I have no idea why. And I joined the management training program. That bank, Chemical, was actually the predecessor bank to what is today called J.P. Morgan Chase. So before you, you see me, pretty conventional guy, businessman, banker, Canterbury, Williams, Wall Street, wife, three kids, grew up in New Canaan, live in Darien, and yes, we have a dog. But the choices I made along the way were anything but conventional. And that, in fact, is my message to you, as you make your choices. Once in New York, I roomed with two of my buddies from Williams. Upper East Side, there were parties in our apartment pretty much every night. Our lease came up for renewal, and I decided to move out. Now, these were my two closest friends. And I realized that all this partying wasn't gonna get me anywhere at the bank. It was a really unconventional choice, and one of those buddies didn't talk to me for about 10 years, believe it or not. At several times in my career, I worked for some horrendous bosses. Incompetent and mean, a lethal combination. Each time I was faced with this situation, I could have either stuck it out, said nothing, been miserable, but I chose to speak up and lo and behold, after I spoke up, I found out that really nobody liked these guys. They were, they were all fired, fortunately. Um, in 2001, I made a choice that many on Wall Street still find today is not, not only unconventional, but was viewed as, as, as stupid and basically crazy. I was offered the job to go run Blackstone, which arguably is the most prestigious private equity firm on the street. A job that would have paid me billions, uh, literally. I'm sort of embarrassed to say that, but uh, true probably the top job on the street uh, in certain respects. But in the fall of that year, my eldest child, Lexi, went to Williams. My son was a junior at Brunswick. My daughter, Izzy, was a fifth grader at Greenwich Academy. All, the, all three were accomplished student athletes, and I didn't want to miss one of their games. And I didn't. By then, I had run our investment bank at J.P. Morgan for 18 years, which is a grueling job. I wanted to become a bigger part of their lives. If I took the Blackstone job, it would have meant family taking a back seat. No games to watch. I made a huge choice, family first no matter what. Now, in a work environment where money is pretty much the scoreboard, unfortunately, that was an unconventional choice. I turned the job down and they gave it to someone else. So the conventional guy you see standing before you got here by making unconventional trust your instinct choices. And as I look back, I would not have changed a thing. The message graduates think long and hard about the choices that you make. They're one of the few things that you can legitimately call your own. And in the end, after tens of thousands of choices, they defined 
who you are. It is in fact true, success in the classroom, on the playing field, in the arts, at work, however you define it, is a choice and it belongs to you. But do remember the choice to succeed is typically really hard, especially when you choose the moon. At Rice University on that day, Kennedy said, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept and one that we are unwilling to postpone and one which we intend to win. Seven years later, July 21st, 1969, Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon. On your graduation day, my mind drifts back to my graduation day from Williams. At Williams, once all the seniors have received their diplomas, they walk through what are called the Mark Hopkins gates. There's an inscription on these gates that has stayed with me ever since I walked through them some 34 years ago. Climb high, climb far, your goal the sky, your aim the star. It's my version of choose the moon. In closing, as a dad and as a fellow Cantuarian, let me make a graduation wish to you and the choices that you make. Number one, choose to have a big heart in everything that you do, whatever it may be. Number two, choose to love God. Number three, choose to love your country. Number four, choose to honor Canterbury. Number five, Choose to be strong and courageous enough to take the road less traveled. Lastly, choose to give your mom and dad a big hug and kiss when this day comes to an end. Remember, they were the ones who chose to bring you into the world. And finally, choose the moon. It was an honor to speak to you today. Thank you.